guys, I'm Sarah. I hope that you're all doing very well. Given that schools are shut at the moment due to COVID-19, of course, I thought that some of you might benefit from getting some advice and help on how to write an excellent personal statement. I'm a medical student myself, and I've previously treated dozens of students on medical school applications. So I hope that you find these tips of use. Before we get into it, I've now received several messages from you guys asking me if I can have a look at your personal statements. And honestly, I would have loved to have helped you all, but uh, due to my other commitments, I have very limited time at the moment. So I've decided to help two of you with the medical school application process. But more about that at the end of the video, so let's get into it. As you're already aware, a personal statement is a piece of writing, 4,000 characters to be precise, for you to articulate why you want to study a particular subject. It's an opportunity for you to prove to the universities that you have the right skills and experiences. Now, I know how overwhelming this might seem, so I've split the structure of the personal statement into three sections for you. You definitely don't have to stick to the structure and um, this is just a suggestion. So let's begin with the introduction. This is the part where you explain why you want to study medicine and in my opinion it's actually the most difficult section to write because as with anything in life, first impressions are very important. That's why I would leave this till the end because as you redraft your personal statement you're going to be changing this several times anyway. You essentially want to intrigue and captivate the reader. You might choose to tell them about a particular experience that moved you your fascination for science or a personal anecdote. Whatever the reason, be authentic and avoid cliches and using words such as passion or love and instead demonstrate your interests by telling them about the books that you read or the further experiences you decided to undertake. Which brings us to section two. Your work experience will make a huge chunk of your personal statement. So it's very important that you prepare a couple of resources and do a bit of research beforehand. I usually suggest for students to make a document where you list all of your work experiences and volunteering roles, whether you volunteer at a charity shop, shadowed a GP, worked at a nursery, put them all down. Include a bit of context such as who you shadowed, how long for and in which department. Now do the same with any extracurricular activities you want to talk about. Nothing is out of scope here, so if you enjoy knitting because it helps you to relax and has taught you the importance of patience, then go ahead and write about it. If you enjoy playing chess because it's a very tactical game and has taught you the importance of problem solving and critical thinking, then go ahead and write that down. After you've created this list, think about what are the traits of a good doctor. Whilst doing so, also have a look at a couple of resources, such as the General Medical Council's Good Practice Guidelines. This will really help to focus your reflections. I've linked this below for you. Another place I urge you to check out is the universities that you're applying to websites. They often have a page on interviews and personal statements which outlines what qualities they are looking for in a potential candidate. Qualities such as empathy, teamwork and organisation are great examples. Showing that you've observed and tried to demonstrate these whilst on placement will greatly boost the quality of your personal statement. Now that you have your resources, we can piece everything together with reflection. The art of writing a good personal statement is in showing and not saying. Through effective reflection, you can prove to the admission officers your level of maturity and insight into medicine, which is exactly what they're looking for. Here are my three steps for reflecting on your clinical experiences. Step one, we've already kind of done this, but briefly explain and describe your work experience. Try to think of a specific incident that demonstrates a certain quality or trait of a doctor. Step two is where you reflect on the experience and tell them what you learned. Remember that the experience doesn't necessarily have to be a positive one. It can be a negative trait that you witnessed, have reflected upon and shown how it was detrimental to the team. Step three is what really levels up your personal statement. Show how you've incorporated this skill into your own practice and how you aim to bring this into medical school. A key component of reflection is that it shows you're willing to improve yourself and learn. 
tell them about a time that you portrayed this specific skill. You really don't have to do this with all of your work experiences, but it really does add a bit of je ne sais quoi. Okay, hopefully that was clear, but as an example, I'll read you an extract from my own personal statement. Um, I'm not saying that this work is the best, but it's just to give you an idea. Here we go. I have also spent a year visiting a local care home for the elderly once a week, helping a resident with dementia whom I befriended to walk slowly around the courtyard taught me the significance of patience. From her comments, having me listening eagerly to what she had to say gave her a sense of well-being and empowerment over her disability. It was surprising to see the large impact my small yet continual contribution of engagement had on her psychological health. Through this, my listening skills grew, and along with it, so did my empathy and compassion. I exhibited these skills whilst volunteering with a woman who was a victim of domestic violence at Fairweather Charity. When reflecting on extracurricular activities, talk about the different skills you've been able to develop. A work-life balance is vital for not burning out in a long career such as medicine. So show the admissions officers that you know how to manage your time well and are an organised, dedicated individual. And finally, it's important to have a closing paragraph that brings together all the core themes in your personal statement and confirms your suitability for medicine. All right, so to end the video, I'm gonna give you my top five tips for writing an excellent personal statement. The first one is that if you're looking for a book to buy, I would highly recommend the ISC personal statement book. I've again linked it down below. It's really good because there's a lot of examples that you can have a flick through and it just gives you an idea of what universities are looking for. My second tip is that you should start your personal statement at least a month before the official deadline. People have done it in less time, but you want to give yourself enough time to redraft and have it checked by other people. By the time you finish writing, I can guarantee you would have changed things around at least 10 times. Number three is that people will give you conflicting advice and if you try to change everything that everyone is telling you, you'll end up losing your own voice in your own personal statement. Choose a couple of people to give you advice that you trust and are perhaps in a position that you want to be in also and just leave it at that. My next tip is to not think about the character count initially and just write about all of your work experiences and extracurricular activities. And I would say to try and include a range of activities. So if you've done a lot of volunteering and have had experience in a hospital, don't just talk about one or the other. Make sure you do cover a bit of both. Having said that, it's definitely about quality over quantity. Someone actually asked me about how to cut down on words and choose what you keep in. I'd say a high quality experience is one that exhibits many different skills in one. This will definitely save you on the word count. And if there is anything particular in your writing that stands out and doesn't make it flow, then I'd say cut those out too. Finally, don't lie because they will catch you out in the interview. We all know that at the ripe age of five, you were probably, I don't know, chilling, relaxing, maxing all cool, instead of thinking about a career in medicine. Show your dedication, show them that you went out of your way to organize work experience and now you have a realistic view of medicine. You know about the complex cases, the long working hours. Also, I forgot to mention that if you're in year 12 watching this or you're doing your GCSEs and still have work experience to do, make sure that you reflect as you're going through them. Give your own perspective on things, write about the good and the bad. Unfortunately, some of your placements have been cancelled because of the pandemic. Um, but there are plenty of opportunities online, such as the BSMS virtual work experience. And I've actually managed to find a couple of um, online volunteering roles as well, which again, are linked down below. So I nearly forgot to film this part, but um, as I said earlier on, it would be my absolute pleasure to help two students of black and minority ethnic backgrounds with their medical school applications. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, share this video with three other people that you think might find it useful and um, just DM me on my Instagram to let me know that you've done this. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it useful 
Um, and if you have any questions, please ask them down below in the comments section.